I'm Ben from Real Seeds, and this is a video for small seed companies showing how to process tomato seed using acid. If you're a home seed saver, you don't need to do this. You can just ferment them as normal. And you can find instructions on how to do that on our website at realseeds.co.uk. I've tried to design a protocol for doing this that is relatively safe and easy to do, even for quite small batches of tomato seed. I'm using 10% hydrochloric acid, which is much safer than concentrated hydrochloric acid, but it is still dangerous and you should wear gloves, safety goggles, protective clothing and have a bucket of water to hand. Please do not attempt this if you are unsure of your ability to do it safely. If you take precautions and are sensible, you should be absolutely fine but you do this completely at your own risk. I've released this video in order to help small seed companies carry on selling tomato seed in light of the new regulations. The larger companies use much more concentrated acid in an industrial process. And we have until now, at the smaller end of the industry, struggled to find a way of doing this. I hope you find this video helpful and the method will be published on the Real Seeds website and you can download the latest version there for free as we have licensed it under Creative Commons. Um, I've got all the things that you should need here. Number one is your copy of the acid extraction protocol, which will be on our website. Um, and then the other things you need are obviously the tomatoes, um, digital scales in order to weigh how much tomatoes you've got and also to measure how much acid you've got. We're going to probably measure the acid using weight rather than volume because it's a bit more accurate. Various disposable containers. I've got paper cups I've saved from takeaways. You can use glass mugs and so on. Just wash them thoroughly afterwards. Definitely a good selection of Pyrex bowls or plastic buckets, depending on the number of tomatoes you're planning to process. And some things to actually do the fermentation in. We've got our tomatoes here. And this works equally well with either cutting the tomatoes in half and squeegeeing the seeds out the way that we normally do when we're just fermenting them, or just mashing them up and adding the acid to the whole mass, which is hugely, hugely faster when you're doing small cherry tomatoes. So you've got these two options. Obviously, if you've got big tomatoes, you might want to be keeping the tomatoes, and it's possibly worth your time to take the seeds out and put the tomatoes aside separately and then only treat the seeds. If you've got loads of little tiny tomatoes, the simplest thing is probably to put it in a bucket or a tub um, and just tread on them barefoot like you are treading grapes or you can use a potato masher. That's also quite successful for smaller quantities. Um, and then we can acid treat them. I'm going to demonstrate the whole thing, but just to recap, it's very simple. We cut up our tomatoes or mush them up or take the seeds out and we weigh whatever it is that we want to acid treat. And for every kilogram of tomato material, we are going to add 75 milliliters of 10% hydrochloric acid. And we're going to leave it for about an hour and a half and then rinse it all off. Important things about this are don't use concentrated hydrochloric acid. We're using 10%, which is still you want to be extremely careful handling, but it's not as dangerous as the concentrated hydrochloric acid. Um, secondly, it is really important to think about safety when you're working with acid and do wear goggles and gloves and have a bucket of water ready. If you spill acid on yourself or on anything, just dilute it and dilute it and dilute it. It's not poisonous. If you dilute it enough, it is completely harmless. The danger is acid burns through it being concentrated on you. Um, I also have to say, anybody who's watching this, obviously I don't know who's going to end up seeing this video. You do this entirely at your own risk. This is acid 
please take all precautions and I accept absolutely no responsibility for anything that happens to you when you're doing this. I've tried to design this as the safest way possible to do it. Um, but you do have to exercise common sense and wear full protective equipment. So what you need, in addition to your tomatoes and your disposable cups and your scales and everything is the following. You need safety goggles, okay? Really important, probably the one bit of you that can be damaged using this acid is your eyes. It's not gonna burn through your skin the way that the really concentrated stuff would, but it would be bad for your eyes. You've gotta wear safety goggles, always. And a plastic apron, okay? It doesn't have to have Sylvester the cat in it, but it needs to be a good plastic apron. That's to stop it getting your clothes. If you've got acid on your clothes, you wash it off immediately using your emergency bucket, which I'll show you in a second. Also, good gloves that don't have holes in the fingers. And finally, your 10% hydrochloric acid which we're going to put in the sink just for safety. You also need your sieve and your bowl. All these things are listed on the piece of paper for the protocol. So I'm just going to put the acid in the sink for safety from now on. And I'm also going to get the safety bucket. So it's really important to have a bucket of water to hand whenever you're working with acid, even this dilute acid, because then if you spill any or on yourself, you can just sploosh this over it and avert any nasty injuries. Um, I think we'll do the method of extracting the seeds rather than doing the whole tomatoes first. So I've just got a disposable container here for keeping my tomatoes in. And you all know this, but not everybody who's watching it will. So I'm just going to demonstrate the traditional method of tomato extraction by hand. You cut them along the equator. Let me just get this. Uh, there we go. You cut them along the equator and then you squeeze, if I can do that, I'm squeezing inwards and upwards so that the seeds come loose. And then I'm using the edge of one half to scrape the seed off and the edge of the other half to scrape the seed off. And I give them a good sharp shake. And if you look now, there's not much seed left in here at all. There's a little bit, which you could give another squeeze and shake, but you can get out about 80, 85% of the seed out almost instantly. And unless you're really short of tomatoes, that's the most efficient way to do it. Obviously, you also need a container to keep your tomato halves in. Like this. So I'm just going to quickly de-seed a few of these tomatoes. That. It's even faster. If you're doing this a lot, the most efficient thing to do is to accumulate all your tomatoes and cut them all in half and then do the squeezing, because then you're not picking the knife up and down in between. It makes it noticeably faster if you're doing several hours of this. Okay, that's probably enough. So we're now going to put this away, because this is food. We don't want it anywhere near anything that's to do with acid. Okay. So here are the insides of our tomato. It's quite a liquid one, this one. 
but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. We're going to weigh that. So I've got my digital scales. I'm zeroing it with the bowl on and Okay, I have 157 grams of tomato bit there, 157 grams, okay? So, I need, for every kilogram, I need 75 milliliters of acid. So that is 0.157 of a kilogram. It's a very small batch. Obviously, normally you'd be doing more than this, but I'm just doing a small batch for demonstration. So in this case, I've just got my phone out with its calculator on it, and I am doing 0.157, that's my 157 grams is 0.157 of a kilogram times 75. I need 12 milliliters of acid. Now you could try and measure this in a measuring jug, but that's not gonna be easy because it's not very accurate. And what we're going to do now, I'm gonna do it by weight because one milliliter weighs one gram, almost exactly. So I need 12 grams of acid. Okay, now I'm just going to swivel across to the sink a little bit so you can see what we're doing. We're going to have all of the acid handling going on the sink. Before I go any further, now I need to put on my protective equipment. So first of all, goggles. And now apron. Okay, just tying my apron on. Now gloves. Okay. Now the acid is already in the sink and I have got down here, right to hand, my emergency bucket of water. I don't want people to be scared of this, you know, this is perfectly reasonable thing to be doing, but it is really important to demonstrate how to do things safely. So what we're going to do, if you remember, I calculated that I had 0.157 of a kilo of tomato goo here, and that means that I need 12 grams of acid in it. So I've got a couple of containers. I'm just gonna put some acid into this container here. So I'm not trying to measure out a tiny amount from this enormous container. So, let me see. Let me just angle that a little bit. There we go. So I'm just gonna pour literally some acid into there. And I'm gonna straight away put the lid back on. Okay. And just be aware, you might get acid on your fingers when you, on your gloves when you're doing that. So if you do, you might want to just rinse them off so you don't transfer it everywhere. Okay, so I've now got this small container with some acid in it. I'm going to come back to my scales. Here we go, back to my scales here. And put this, any container will do, it can be a Pyrex mug or anything, you know, just anything you can clean out afterwards or throw away. Set it to zero. And I'm now going to very gently pour in until I get 12 grams. There we go, that's 12 grams of acid. Now, that's, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's not very much. I mean, okay, this isn't very much tomatoes, but it's a surprisingly small amount considering how much it's going to react with. We literally, we put this in there like that. Now, this container has had acid in it. We're going to put it back in the sink and rinse it. As soon as the acid is diluted with water, it's safe. Okay, I'm going to leave that in the sink, but that is now safe to handle. We've still got this container over here, which is our leftover acid from pouring into it. Normally, you would now pour that away, but I'm going to demonstrate the other way of doing it. So I'm just putting it in the sink for the moment. So here's our acid and tomato mixed together. And we're going to stir it. We're going to stir it here. Hang on. There we are. We're going to stir it with a stainless steel fork. Don't use your nice silver fork, it will go horribly wrong. 
There we go. Stir it round and put a timer on. I think it needs to be about 90 minutes. You can always check by poking at it with the fork and seeing whether or not the little sacks of gel are still attached to the seeds. And you can always do it for another 15, 20 minutes if they're not. We now need to put this somewhere safe. This, this is much safer already now. The only thing that's really dangerous is the undiluted acid that we had to start with. Um, this is much safer because it's been mixed in with the tomato stuff. It's already reacting with that. I happen to have my favorite, which is a Passat jar. Let me just angle this up a little bit. There we go, Passat jar and a jam funnel. Just happens to fit inside the top of the Passat jar. And I'm going to put that on there. And again, dirty bowl, straight in the sink. This is why it's really good to work next to the sink. Now, vital thing, right on your Passat jar, always when um, handling seeds and processing seeds, just note everything. And I would write the variety and the time on it. And then once you've taken your gloves off and got yourself all cleaned up and wiped down, you can set a proper timer on the clock for it. This, this technique I'm about to demonstrate now is best for small tomatoes, like cherry tomatoes, or the really teeny tiny tomatoes, where it would be very fiddly to, um, to squidge them all up or, or cut them up and, and try and extract the seeds by hand. So what you do in that case is you just kind of put them in and burst them, or you can chop them roughly. If you've got like big beefsteak tomatoes and the seeds are all caught inside in, in the sort of pithy bits inside if they're not very juicy, um, just mash them up. It doesn't matter how you do it. Um, because these are so big, I've actually cut them slightly before mashing them. Uh, but I'm just going to cut them in very roughly. Obviously, the, the disadvantage of this is you don't get to eat the tomatoes. The advantage is that you don't spend as much time sitting and squishing them. So it really depends how much you like tomatoes and how much time you've got relative to tomato. Okay, um, I'll do a couple more. Right, so you've got them in here. And now, if, if this was a big batch, I'd put them in something like a tub truck and jump on them. Um, small cherries, you can do it in the bottom of a bucket with, with a potato masher works quite well, or your fist, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to mash these up. These are quite underripe tomatoes that I bought from the supermarket for the purposes of demonstration, so they're not really mushing very well. Your own would probably be a lot softer than this. But um, that's probably good. Really, all we're trying to do is make sure that the, uh, the seeds are all separated from each other and floating around in the liquid so the acid can get at them. Okay, so it's exactly the same as before. For every kilogram of tomato that we want to treat, we need 75 milliliters of acid. So first of all, we need to find out how much tomato we've ended up with. This point, what are we going to use for a container? We're going to use this. They do fit, okay. So I've got a set. This to zero. I'm just figuring out how much tomato I've got. I have 600 grams of tomato here. Put that down. 600 grams of tomato. So for every kilo, I need 75 milliliters. So again, calculator out. And that is 0.6 times 75. I need 45 milliliters of acid. And again, that's such a small quantity, it wouldn't be very accurate to do it in a measuring jug. We're going to do it by weight. So I need 45 grams of acid to treat this because it weighs 0.6 of a kilo. Okay. So before I handle the acid, safety goggles back on. Gloves. 
which are safe to handle because I rinsed them before I took them off. Okay, good. Now, we have disposable measuring cup, zero it, and container of neat acid, we want 45 grams. It's not quite enough, so I need to decant a little bit more. from the bulk acid. Not a lot. Put the lid back on. Let's check you've made the acid safe. 30, 35, 40, 45. There's a, a tiny bit of acid left and I'm just going to pour it down the drain. And then I'm going to rinse the container and rinse all the way around the sink. And I'm going to rinse just around, the, around this bit of the container in case any drips of acid drips down the side of it when I was pouring in. And this one left. And now this should all be really completely safe there. Okay, so I've got my 45 grams of acid and my 0.6 kilo of tomato to treat. I'm going to pour it in. Rinse the container on the outside, down, into the glass. Stainless steel fork and gently, you don't be flicking this up at yourself, gently stir this round. Okay, now in this case, I don't think it's going to go into my passata jar because the neck is too narrow. So I'm just going to leave it in this bowl for a minute. You want to be stirring this every 15, 20 minutes. You definitely want to stir it a couple of times at least. Um, you know, just in case there are some lumps, you want to make sure the acid gets throughout it. But that's pretty good. So we've got this one here, and again, you would label this with the variety and the time, and then when we've taken our gloves off and have cleaned up, we can um, we can then set a proper timer on our phone or on the kitchen timer or something. We could definitely do with a bit more time, but. We'll demonstrate anyway. So this is a mixture of, th this is one where I squeezed the seeds out rather than chopped. And hopefully if you've done tomatoes before, you know how to do this. This is where you add water and dilute and pour off and add water and dilute and pour off. And eventually you should be left with really clean seeds. I don't think this is going to be that successful because it's quite clear that it's not been processed for long enough. But I'll do it anyway. Okay, this is still acid mixed with tomato, though obviously a lot of it will have been neutralized by reacting with it for an hour and a half. So I will put my gloves on and probably my incredibly uncomfortable safety goggles as well. Safety goggles, gloves now. Go to the sink. These are my now clean disposable things. Right, so here's the hat. Just make sure we've got there. Okay, so I'm now going to add water to this. Cold water, not too cold. And stir it. Now this first time, I suppose there probably is a noticeable amount of acid present there, so you don't be splashing it around. After you've diluted it a few times, it's pretty harmless. If it's been digested enough, we should start to get seed sinking and gack floating. Um, and I think this particular demonstration might not be too successful, but we'll see. Okay. So I'm now just going to pour off some of the stuff that's in suspension. 
whilst trying not to pour off any seeds. Okay, we're going to stop now, but then proceed there. I'm going to top up with water again. This is all just standard tomato seed washing now. So if you've done this before, it's exactly the standard procedure. Um, oh, it's not bad. It clearly needed a bit longer, but it's not bad. I'm going to give it a, a twizzle and see if I can knock some of the seeds free from the bits of the centre that they're still stuck to. Okay, hopefully you can still see that. Okay, once it settles, and I'll start to need to wait a bit, it's still moving too much. Okay. So all this liquid is perfectly safe now. It's, it's been diluted so many, many times. And now that the liquid itself is pretty clear, we're, we're not gonna get much, much cleaner seed than what we've got now. And you can see it's not come completely clean. I think it probably would have needed a little bit longer fermenting than that. Um, so I would try it maybe with another 15, 20 minutes. I think it varies quite a bit depending on the tomato. But this is not bad. Okay, so we've got our clean seed. Um, I'll just talk through this in case people haven't done it before. You've got your clean seed in clean water. You need a sieve. Plastic sieve is good, but I'm doing this at home, so I haven't got my um, seed processing sieves. I've only got the cake making sieve, which is metal, but it'll be fine for one off. And you swirl your seed around to get it all moving and dump it in the sieve. And then put the sieve in a bowl, which I prepared earlier. You've got a nice white bowl, so you can see what's going on. And then just have the tap running, fill up the bowl. Okay, so you have to imagine there's loads more seeds in there because obviously you'd be doing a couple of kilos of tomatoes. And then have your tap just dribbling. There you go. So you have your tap just dribbling like that. So there's a constant flow of water, just refreshing it. And leave it like that for an hour, okay? And what that is doing is it's keeping them cool and it's just diluting any acid that might be sticking to the seeds or got absorbed by the surface of the seeds into fresh water and washing it away. And after an hour of treatment like that, we're then going to take them out, dry them off and plate them out to dry. Okay, so now you have to imagine an hour has passed and we're coming back to our tomato seed, which has now been completely neutralized. Tap it, get the water out and put it on something like a plastic chopping board is ideal for drying. And we flip and then using your hand inside the sieve, move them out into a nice thin layer and pat it dry using kitchen towel. We want them to dry out now as quickly as possible before they can think about going moldy or germinating. And again, we want them to dry in a place that is not hot, but has good airflow. So cool and drafty is perfect for drying tomato seeds. There we go. And again, as always, you would now label this board or a piece of paper clipped to this board with the variety and the date 
And anything particular you did, if you did it, say, for an hour and a half or for two hours, or you accidentally put in too much acid, or you think you might have put in too little acid, anything weird, write a note on it, and include that with the seeds, because it makes it much easier to figure out what went on later on when comparing different batches. So here we have a container with the tomatoes where I just chopped them and mushed them roughly by hand and then added the acid. Again, they've had about an hour and a half and looking at them, they're almost ready. They probably needed two because it's quite cold in my kitchen. Now, slight difference here is we've got these enormous lumps of tomato in it and they are not going to float off. So what works quite well is either to have a garden riddle, which is a quarter inch mesh, or in the absence of that, a colander, something that is going to retain the bits of tomato and let the seeds through. So I've got a colander here, and I'm going to put that in a bowl in the sink. So we're going to put the mix in here, put cold water on it, and hopefully the seeds will wash through into there. So I've got to do it fairly gently so as not to splurge them out over the side and wash them all down the drain. Um, but you can figure something out. Just use buckets and, and something will sieve the big chunks of tomato out. So here we go. You can see, well, maybe you can't see, but they have started to separate quite nicely from that. Just put the whole lot in like that and wash them down with a bit of water. Okay. Now, if you have a really powerful tap, do be careful. You don't want to be spraying this first lot up in your face because it is still quite acidy. After you've done a few rinses and so on, it's by diluted, it's much safer. Just, you know, think about that. I'm going to use the tap just to kind of blast off the tomatoes, swirl them around, give them a bit of a twizzle. And now if you look, I don't know, if you can see there's not many seeds left in there at all. They've mostly been blasted off the, the fruit, which has gone quite soft and gooey from the acid. And all the seeds, I can't see them because of the murk, but I'm really hoping they're in there. Okay, so now we want to get rid of this. I think it's fine to put it in the compost. If you're at all concerned about putting it in the compost, you can put it in a bucket with, say, a gallon of water and let it sit for a day or so until any remaining acid will have reacted and got diluted by then. I'm going to rinse off my colander. Um, so that's now clean and safe. Get rid of it. Okay, so now we just need to do the washing rinsing routine um, as normal. I'm going to just it into, it's always good to have a tall, thin container um, for this because it gives them more chance to settle. Just put everything in there. Again, immediately rinse and wash your thing that might have got acid in it. And then that's safe. Right, so we are now back to where we were with the other one. We've got a container with seeds and liquid bits in it. We're give it a good furious stir. And hopefully it'll settle out. I'm going to stop very soon because we're getting down to the seeds. I'm going to stop there. You don't have to get it all, you just need to get some out every time. Okay. Just letting them settle a bit before I pour. Not quite there. Now I can pour. These are looking a bit cleaner. I think just the extra sort of 10, 15 minutes from when I did the first one has helped a lot.
Good, so this can be our final rinse. Um, you might want to keep on doing it. There's no harm to keep rinsing. You can get off the lighter seeds, any smaller seeds and floating bits. Do this as much as you like. It does, it does no harm, obviously, unless you're losing seeds in the process. But I would say that that is now really quite clean seed, um, but we do need to neutralize it. So I've got my sieve and I'm going to pour the seed, give it, give it a bit of a swirl to get it all moving and pour it into the sieve. Okay. Right. This is fine, let me just go aside. And then I'm going to put my sieve in the bowl. And this is just to get any acid off that is still attached to the seed coats, maybe it's soaked into the seed a bit. We don't want it reacting with the seed in storage or even worse, um, rehydrating when the seed is planted and reacting with the germinated seedlings. So we want to make sure that all the acid is washed off the seeds. And just using cold water, if it's winter time or it's the end of autumn, you've got icy cold water, don't do that. You want it like a bit below body temperature. Obviously warm water would germinate the seed, that's not good either, but um, you don't want to give them cold shock. Okay, and now leave your water trickling like that for one hour. When your hour is up, take out your seed, tap on the bottom of the sieve to get as much water out as possible. If you've got a big lump of seed, you can do this a lot and get loads of water out. Really improves your drying time and it really improves your germination results as a, um, as a consequence of that. And then onto a chopping board. Flip and tap, bang it out and put your hand inside and use your hand inside the sieve to move around into a flat layer, one seed thick, and use dry tissue paper or an old towel to just very gently, the seeds are quite fragile at this point, you don't want to be pressing hard, you want to just very gently blot them dry. There we go, nice. If we have a look, that's worked quite well. Um, so you can see they're nice and clean, these seeds. Uh, they still have got some hairs on them. They still got a bit of a gel coat on them. We can easily ferment it for another 20 minutes without doing any harm, but I think that might be the limit. Okay, you obviously want to label this and put it in a cool but airy place to dry. So um, I think that covers the whole process. If I just recap, we can do it either by just taking out the seeds and the juice or by mushing up the tomatoes. We weigh how much material we've got and we add 75 milliliters of 10% acid for every kilogram. You want to be careful when measuring the acid and do it in a somewhat planned and controlled way. And we're using the fact that one gram of acid is one milliliter to do it by weight because that's much more accurate than trying to measure these tiny little volumes we're working with. Um, do it for about an hour and a half. Have a poke at it. If it looks like it's not quite ready, do it for maybe another 15, 20 minutes. And after that, you dilute and rinse as if you'd fermented it. Then you need to take your clean seed and have it in gently running water for at least an hour. Um, you could do it for several hours. Um, there's no problem. As long as the water's cold, it's not going to germinate. And then tip it out and dry it as normal. Well, that's the end of the demonstration of the tomato seed extraction. I hope that you found it helpful or interesting and that it helps you produce your own tomato seed that meets the requirements for acid extraction, even in small batches. If you have any feedback or any information, please do send it to us at admin at realseeds.co.uk.